Am I the a-hole for calling my parents a-holes for what they did to my birthday? I, 21 female, was one of those kids who was born on Christmas Day, which I wouldn't have minded at all if my parents treated this normally, for example. My friend's boyfriend was also born on Christmas, and he said his parents would do his birthday in the morning and Christmas in the afternoon, and I wouldn't have minded that at all. However, my parents said it was greedy to have two celebrations on one day, so I had to choose between having Christmas with everyone else, my family and extended family, or have my birthday on Boxing Day and not take part in Christmas. I wouldn't have any presents or chocolates and stuff everyone else would. I wasn't even allowed to help with the Christmas tree. This was pretty terrible. Either I had Christmas with everyone and wasn't even wished happy birthday, and because we wouldn't be at school, I never got happy birthdays for my friends. Or I was completely left out during Christmas and had a birthday where everyone was still focused on Christmas. And if I chose birthday, my parents would tell my extended family I didn't want Christmas. And if I chose Christmas, they said I didn't want my birthday, so I didn't get both for my extended family. It made my childhood absolute hell and ruined holidays for me. My first Christmas slash birthday away from home was probably the best day of my life. Well, because of COVID, my family were talking about doing a Zoom call for Christmas. And my mom said, well, I guess Opie gets to choose to be part of the Christmas call or we call her on Boxing Day for her birthday. I don't know why, but I just blew up and called her an a-hole and said they ruined my childhood. It's not like they couldn't afford it. My family is probably in the top 1% of the country money-wise. And even so, I could have still taken part in the festivities and only had one present. But my brothers are calling me selfish, and my auntie says I need to apologize. And it's Christmas, so I feel like I should. Edit. Oh my god. Thank you everyone so much. I went to bed last night and woke up to about a million notifications. I'm sorry, but I don't think I can get through everyone. But I'm definitely trying to. I've had the best birthday slash Christmas. My best friend got me a Nintendo Switch, and we're going to have a huge gaming competition together, and we got leftovers of KFC for lunch. Thank you all so much for the birthday and Christmas wishes. I feel so honored. I love you all. Top comments. Not the A-hole. What were they thinking? What were they thinking? Why would anyone do that to their kid? Maybe I'm biased, but I'd never want my kid to feel like I did. Nor should you, not the able. Edit, happy birthday. And Merry Christmas, OP gets to have both. Merry Birthmas, and start telling your family they can celebrate either Christmas or your birthday with you while you celebrate both. Or start having them pick birthday or Christmas and only celebrate what they pick for them. Like, if aunt says Christmas and her birthday is in August, that sucks. You pick Christmas though, so don't get greedy. Just want to tag along in this comment and say that Opie should absolutely do this to the family. Ask them if they want Christmas or birthday, and then only the one they choose. I feel so sorry for Opie that they never got the opportunity to spend both Christmas and their birthday with their family. Opie was completely justified in their anger towards their parents. Opie's parents made them feel like a burden for wanting to celebrate their birthday. It was not Opie's fault that they were born on Christmas. Even if Opie's family could not afford two sets of presents, they could have at least acknowledged their birthday. Ostracizing Opie from the family for wanting to celebrate their birthday, or purposefully asking relatives to forget Opie's birthday if they choose to attend Christmas, seems so unnecessary and cruel. Luckily, it seems that Opie no longer lives with their parents, so they're free to have their cake and eat it too. Am I the a-hole for pretending to not recognize my parents when they tried to reconnect? I was raised mostly by my uncle and aunt. My older sister developed a serious illness when I was six, and my parents decided that they couldn't care for both of us, I guess. So they kind of unceremoniously dumped me at my grandparents, and my uncle took me in. Like, didn't even explain to me what was going on, just, you're gonna visit your grand for a while, and never pick me back up. My grandparents and uncle explained it later, and they are pretty livid at my parents. I've seen my parents maybe five times since then, and not at all for the last nine years. I decided to stop having contact with them when I was 12, and since I was the only one reaching out, all communication broke down. It turned out okay, 
I love my aunt and uncle, and it turns out they can't have kids, so they always say I'm their miracle kid. I was just misrouted by the stork at first. I was formally adopted by them when I turned 18. I wish it had been earlier, but there were some red tape things that would have made that really expensive and difficult. I'm 21 now. My sister passed away between Thanksgiving and Christmas, and I made a trip back from school for the funeral. But I stayed in the back and left before my bio parents could talk to me. They called my uncle to try to talk to me, but I said I didn't want to, so I told them that I wasn't available at the moment. They finally caught up to me over Christmas when I went to the midnight mass with my gran and approached me and tried to give me a hug. I did recognize them, but I pretended not to and just backed off and said, Sorry, do I know you? They said, We're your parents. And I said, My parents are at home, and went and sat down with my gran. They sat behind us, and I could just feel the stare on the way out, and they were like, You really don't recognize us? And I said, Oh, are you my dad's brother? I think I remember you from when I was little. My gran thinks they deserved it, trying to come back to me like nothing happened. But they wrote me a long letter about how hurt they are and how I should understand that they are trying to do the right thing and how they'll always be my parents and I can't change that. Other family members think I was too harsh as they're grieving, but I don't think they should get a pass just because they remembered me now that my sister is gone. Top comments. Not the a-hole. Are you my dad's brother was pure class. And it's technically correct with the adoption. OP dropped their crown if they're having to ask. The part I really want to know is, this is a church service. How many of the kindly church ladies couldn't help but overhear? I'm personally hoping all of them. Oh, they'll all know soon enough. They gossip. A lot. OP's grandma is going to make sure it gets spread. She sounds like she is there for it. OP handled that very difficult and emotionally taxing situation incredibly well while simultaneously sticking it to their ex-parents. I understand that caring for an ill child is extremely difficult. However, OP's parents didn't reach out for assistance from the aunt and uncle. They simply abandoned OP and left the child on the aunt and uncle's doorstep. OP's biological parents' response to OP's rejection said everything about how they view OP as an object that belongs to them that they can get rid of or take back at a moment's notice. OP does not owe their parents their affection because they suddenly remember they have another child. Am I the a-hole for moving out after my parents told me to pay rent? This story happened almost a year back, and when I told my parents about this, they said I should post it here because they were split 50-50. So I, 19 male, moved out of my parents' house about a year ago. There was nothing wrong in my life. I had a good upbringing, and I loved being home. I had a lot of friends and my parents were loving, or so I thought. Anyways, I was going to have a big 18th birthday, as it is the legal age where I stay, Australia. It means you can go from boy to man, child to adult. I had a venue rented out, and I had family and friends coming from all over to celebrate with me. We had a blast that night. I had my first drink, and almost made it to my last. I don't remember anything from that night, but from the photos I seen, it looked like I had a good night, so I was happy. A few days after that night, my parents sat me down to have a talk. They told me that I'm a man now, and that I've been working a lot of hours, and yet they haven't received anything. They told me that as soon as I started working, they expected me to help pay rent. Obviously, I didn't know any of that, because I didn't get told. They told me that I should have known better, but now that I'm 18, they expect me to help with rent. Honestly, I didn't mind helping them if they asked. I was 16 when I got my first job at McDonald's, and I'm now working in construction. They made it seem like I was in the wrong for not giving them money. And I get where they're coming from, but from a young boy's perspective, all I saw was green. All I saw was a triple-digit paycheck that I wanted to spend straight away. Anyways, I told them I'd start helping them from now on, and it wasn't good enough for them. They told me that I had to pay them back all the money that I should have given them when I first started working, which was almost 10k. I said no flat out, and they got mad. They told me that either I pay rent and pay them back what they are owed, or I move out and find my own place. So that's what I did. 
I moved out a few days after to my friend's house for a bit until I found my own apartment and I've been living there for about eight to 10 months. As soon as I moved out, I got bombarded with calls and texts saying that I disrespected by not paying them what they owe and making it harder for them to live now that they don't have someone washing or doing their laundry, taking out their rubbish and all those little stuff. They're both in their early 40s and are more than capable of doing it. My friends asked me why I never introduced them to my parents and told them what I've told you. Some of them already hated my parents and some of them said it was my duty as their son. I honestly didn't know I had to give them money or help out. I would have if they asked, but I feel like they just disrespected and tried to gaslight me into giving them money. I just need to know if I'm the a-hole or not. Edit. A lot of people have asked me what my cultural background is, and if it has something to do with my situation. My mother is from Chile, and my dad is Samoa. As I know, both cultures do expect help, but mostly in the form of chores and keeping the house clean. It isn't until you're 18 and still living there that you are expected to pay rent. I do have siblings, and they had jobs before they were 18 too. They were never made to pay rent before they were 18, nor did my parents ask for backdated rent. Just wanted to clear up the air for some frequently asked questions. Edit 2. As some of you pointed out, it is to my better judgment that I should have helped out without having to be told. I'll take that as a fault of mine. But what I won't accept and can now clearly see that backdating rent to a minor, which is already bad in itself, will never be acceptable, and I stand firm on my decision of not paying and moving out. I do, however, have a family dinner in a few days with my parents and siblings, so if anyone wants an update after that, then I'll be happy to make one. Thank you for all the help and support. It makes me happy knowing that I made the right choice and to have unbiased opinions on this matter. Top Comments not the a-hole. I was about to say you're the a-hole until they told me that I had to pay them back all the money I should have given them when I first started working, which is almost 10k. You mentioned this. This is absolutely insane, especially since they only told you about helping with rent after you turned 18. They shouldn't start charging you as soon as you get a job at 16. It is typical to ask to help with rent after the child turns 18. It isn't typical to start charging your child for rent at the age of 16, the moment they get a job, and say nothing for two years. You owe your parents nothing, OP. It makes me wonder if the parents were 10K in debt or something, and instead of paying it themselves, tried to guilt OP into inadvertently paying it for them. It has to be that, because this is actually a first for me. I've never seen or heard of parents putting their kid or kids in debt starting from them getting their first on-the-books job. I had a friend whose parents gave him a bill when he graduated high school for costs incurred raising him. Since it was quite a lot, he was pretty overwhelmed. My dad had to sit him down and tell him, this is not an enforceable debt. You are not legally obligated to pay a dime. He hasn't spoken to his father since. His dad always came across as strict, but no one expected that level of a-holeness. A girl I was friends with back in high school had the same. When we were like 16 or so, her dad brought a big file full of so many receipts and other paid bills, like doctor visits and phone, and told her she will have to pay it all back when she turns 18. He said he was doing her a favor by giving her two years to save. The dude had receipts for baby items like bottles and toys. He even included how much he paid in child support as a debt she owed him. He started this basically when she was born. I feel for your friend. What an absolutely awful way for a parent to treat their kid. Edit. I'm getting asked the same question a lot, what my friend did in response. So I'm gonna answer it here instead of replying to everyone. Her parents had been divorced for years and she lived with her mom full time. We rarely even spoke to her dad by then anyway, so she pretty much cut off contact. We lost contact a while after high school, so I'm not sure if they had any contact after that, but I know they didn't once he gave her that file with how much she owed him and the projection for the remaining two years. He only reached out to her like once after that, and I think it was to tell her that her 18th was coming up and to say he couldn't come to her graduation, but that it would probably be a good idea to add any money she got from the family or for graduation to what she would be giving him. 
I don't think she would have ever paid him or that she would speak to him again. She never really reached out to him when we were friends and he rarely reached out to her. She deserved better. I could understand if the parents asked OP to begin paying rent after they turned 18. However, it makes no sense that OP's parents would begin charging them at 16 when they're still a minor and not tell them. To me, it sounds like OP's parents are struggling financially and need OP to help them pay off some of their debts. Especially since OP said that this wasn't done to any of their older siblings. It would be one thing if the parents were honest with OP and told them that they needed a bit of financial assistance to maintain their home. But instead, OP's parents decided to guilt them into paying a large sum of money by claiming that OP is indebted to them. Trying to teach your child how to be responsible by charging a bit of rent when they're an adult is one thing. But putting them into debt the second they turn 18 is setting them up for failure. OP made the right decision by moving out. Am I the a-hole for moving out because my parents expect me to help take care of my little brothers? My 18 male parents decided to have their kids in sets. There's me and my sister, 16 female, and our younger brothers, three, six months. They had me at 20, and I guess decided they wanted more. My older brother is a good kid, but him and the baby are a lot to handle, obviously. This is where my current issue comes into play. Our parents told my sister and I once my mom was pregnant with the youngest, that they wanted us to help more with taking care of them. Fair enough, we both figured, but since then, it's been a lot. Once we get back from school, we'd basically be babysitting our older brother until my parents got back from work or whatever else they were doing. Then we had no time for anything besides homework before bed. This was most weekdays, keep in mind. My entire senior year, my sister and I were basically free babysitters. We could never do anything because we always had to help with the kids. When the youngest was born, it got even worse. Mom was right back to work, and both our parents worked like 60 hours a week, so we would basically switch to childcare duty as soon as school was done until someone got home around dinner. My sister likes to joke that she's had the teen mom experience, and I'm done. I told our parents that I know taking care of my brother is a condition of living here, so I'm out. In a week, two friends and I are going to split a one-bedroom dump. I work part-time, and that can be full-time. I'm taking trade classes that I can take loans out for. I can do it. The issue is everyone is pissed. My sister is pissed because she'll have to do more. My parents are pissed because my sister is pissed at them, and so on. Now I feel like I'm being selfish to do this. Top comments. Not the a-hole. Not your kids. I hate that parents put the younger children onto the older children because they can't afford childcare or don't want to take care of them. People should really stop having kids they're gonna force on their older children. Not the a-hole. Everyone should be mad at the parents, not OP. Older siblings can help with the younger ones a bit, but it is your parents' job to raise all their kids. They need to get their affairs in order. I think it sucks that the parents can't see the obvious staring right at them, and that is their lack of parenting and planning is driving OP to move out. They have no right to be mad. Not the a-hole. Oh, they planned all right. They planned to parentify their two oldest children. They have no plan for childcare outside of them. Go for it, OP. You're being used and abused. Do you have any other family that can help? Not the a-hole. The parents aren't mad at OP for moving out. They're mad because the sister is mad. Growing up in a similar situation, I fully sympathize with OP. When you decide to have multiple children, you have to think about whether or not you will have the time to care for and spend time with all of them. It sounds like OP's parents just assumed that OP and their sister would step up to be second parents. But parentifying your children causes a lot of issues in the family. The youngest children grow up feeling closer to their older siblings than their parents, and the older siblings may grow to resent their younger siblings for taking away their freedom in childhood. I hope that before OP moves out, they can have an honest discussion with their parents about the effect that looking after their younger siblings all the time has had on them and maybe convince them to not do the same to their sister. Though, this may be wishful thinking. Am I the a-hole for demanding that my parents uninvite my ex-wife and my ex-best friend from their garden party? I came to Reddit for an honest opinion on if I'm the a-hole. I, 32 male, have been divorced from my ex-wife, Allie, 32 female, for four years. It was not a nice thing. 
She and my ex-best friend, Silas, 25 male, have been married for three years and have a one-year-old baby. My parents and Ellie's parents were longtime family friends and that didn't stop after our divorce. My parents are hosting their yearly garden party, which is just an excuse for them to catch up and gossip with the other seniors. I was visiting my parents when they told me that Silas and Ellie would be in town and they were invited to the garden party. My parents can't wait to meet their baby. I told them, no, they are not coming. My parents didn't budge and said they would not be rude enough to retract an invitation after Ellie and Silas agreed. I said no one wants their ex-wife at their parents' party. My parents said I could be polite for one day. They really want to meet the baby and catch up with them. I made an ultimatum that it was either me or them. I would not attend if they came. My parents called me an a-hole for making them choose as Silas and Ellie hadn't asked and potentially making Ellie's parents think badly of them. Am I the a-hole? Top comments. You're the a-hole. You cheated on your wife and everyone took her side. I do not care if it was just a kiss. You cheated and from what you told us, she did not. You just think she did because she moved on fast and you were obviously projecting. You chose to date the daughter of a family friend and then chose to cheat on her. You cannot expect your family to then cut her out. They do not even know her through you. You know her through them. Welcome to the consequences of your own actions. Edit. Please read Opie's comments before asking where I got this information. Adding in, he justified cheating on her because she was having medical problems and not paying enough attention to him. Not paying enough attention to him. Meaning, she wouldn't have sex with him. Probably because, you know, she was sick. Whoa, where did the cheating part come from? It's not in the post. Here you go. Info. Did Ellie cheat on you with Silas? Or were you just upset that they dated after you divorced? It seems like you feel some sort of betrayal by Silas. Edited to add, that's a bit more than a little mistake. Everyone sucks here. Ellie had an emotional affair with Silas. She insists she didn't and only thought of their relationship after we separated, which is BS since they moved quick. I think she was looking for a reason to divorce me because I made one little mistake and she threw me out of the house and poisoned my relationship with my parents. Silas was my best friend and I never could think he would choose her over me. I defended him from her every time she would say I was too old and had too much to think about to hang out with Silas, but apparently she wasn't too old to get knocked up by him. What's the one little mistake? My wife and I had problems in our marriage. She was going to a medical issue, and she was very testy and impatient with me. Not to mention, she wasn't in the mood for anything. We were both pulling long hours at work. Silas doesn't need a job, so he would occasionally help me out and my wife with stuff. I worked so many hours for us, and honestly, work was a better environment for me. I was happier. I didn't feel criticized. My coworkers actually liked me. At a work party, it got a little out of hand, and I accidentally kissed a coworker. I realized what I was doing was a mistake and I immediately pulled back. It was a half second of our lips touching at most. A coworker told my wife and she immediately threw me out of the house with no warning and filed for separation. Silas moved in a few months later. They got married and popped out a miracle baby that my parents fawn over. Ah, so when you accuse Ellie of infidelity, it's really just you projecting. And what were her medical issues? Basically, you were saying she was sick and understandably irritable and not interested in sex. And being the loving husband you are, you started avoiding her, spending time with work friends, and eventually hooked up with one of them. And you feel like the aggrieved party? Shaking my head. Before reading the comments, I had a little bit of sympathy for OP. From the original post, it sounded a bit like OP's parents were choosing his ex-wife and friend over them. However, after reading through OP's replies, It is clear that they left some key details out intentionally to paint themselves as the victim of the situation. In reality, OP cheated on their wife when they were sick and because she would not sleep with them despite her poor health. OP's ex was also well acquainted with OP's parents before they got together. The fact that OP casually left those details out already makes them the a-hole. But on top of that, OP wants to make their parents choose between spending time with them and spending time with the ex-wife who was a longtime family friend and getting to meet her baby for the very first time. OP is a huge a-hole. Thanks for watching. Let me know down below if you agree with the verdict. Also, 
consider checking out my other channel, star underscore Ving Art, where I post my artwork and my Etsy, Starving Art Company, where I sell my art prints and stickers. Bye.